Uh, today's tech tip brought to you by AC Parts Warehouse. We're going to change clutch out on a sanding compressor and SD7 series. We're going to take a 12 volt coil off, convert it to a 24 volt coil. For a brief review of the tools that we're using today, clutch plate puller MT1116, external snap ring pliers, a three arm pulley puller 6 inch or 8 inch, a spanner wrench, a dead blow hammer, a number two Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a 14 millimeter socket for SD7 series compressors, a three quarter inch socket for SD5 series compressors, a clutch pulley press fixture, Loctite, and a shaft thread protector. For in the field service applications, we don't have a, a, a jig a vise to hold the compressor. To pull the nut off, you're going to have to have a spanner wrench to hold the clutch down. Um, they're sold at any auto parts store. We carry them here. This will hold the lock, the, the drive hub still. So you put your 14 millimeter to remove the nut. To speed things up. What we're going to do is, if you have a butterfly wrench that usually works the best, any type of air. Got your lock nut off. One tool that you really need to invest in as a clutch hub remover, an armature puller. Um, we have them, they're available. If you're using air, be careful that you don't drive the drive bolt down into the hub and damage it. Got the hub pulled up. We're remove it. All right. Now one thing that I will warn you do not do in the field is pull the hub off with screwdrivers by flexing the leaf springs. This is real critical if you have to reuse the drive hub. If you're getting a whole new clutch assembly you can pull it off that way. Um, if you're going back with the used drive hub, make sure you pull it off with an armature removal. Once it's lifted up, it is okay. Once again, pull it off with some flatheads. At this point, we're down to pulling the pulley off. The pulley's head on by an external snap ring under the nose shaft of the pressure. Once you pull the snap ring off, we'll want to use either the lock nut from the compressor or some type of shaft protector when using your pulley. Got the pulley up, pulley comes off. Okay, we've got the pulley off, now we've got to take the coil off. The coil's real simple. It's held onto the nose of the compressor with another external snap ring. Pop that off. The coil's free, but at this point we need to pull off the coil retaining wire clip. There's two types of coils on sandings. You'll have an internally grounded coil and an externally grounded. If it's externally grounded, the coil grounds out to the nose of the compressor, which is A steel nose cone on an aluminum body. Okay, we've got the coil off. We're ready to put the new coil or clutch assembly back on the compressor. If it's a used compressor, just take a quick look at the, the, the shaft of the compressor, the nose cone. Make sure there's not any wears, deformities, or any debris. Clean it up so you'll have a nice, clean mating surface contacts. All the grooves are cleaned out from trash and debris that might have been in there during use. Okay. Installing the coil, you got a guide pin hole on the back of all the coils. On sandings, they're located, the the guide pins are at six o'clock, just directly opposite of the coil. Once it's sitting back on the nose of the compressor, using the external snap ring. 
make sure you get it fully seated down on that nose. One thing I like to do and I suggest is taking a flathead and sticking in and making sure that that snap ring is fully seated. Note on sanding accessory kits that come with snap rings, shims, nuts, wire clips, they use a beveled snap ring. The beveled side of the snap ring faces up. The other side will be flat. Some aftermarket kits have flat sided snap rings on sandings. The beveled side goes out. We've got the coil mounted to the compressor with the snap ring. It's time to put the wire clip on. Make sure that if it's an externally grounded coil that you've got it on. Okay, spec for this is six pounds of torque. It's not that much, you'll strip it out. We're ready to put the pulley back on. Once we've confirmed that the snap ring's on, the coil wire is attached to the nose cone of the compressor, we'll put the pulley on. Always tap it down, just make sure that is on the nose. If you're in the field, you can either use the old pulley Mount it on top. The goal is to apply even force on the drive surface. And these are casted pulleys. They're not machined. They're casted and then they're machined and plated. So the metal is weak and it's very easy to bend it. So got to pull it back up using a dead blow hammer. Seating it down on the nose of the compressor where the snap ring groove is exposed. Back with the coil snap ring. Same thing applies here at this point. Give it a couple taps to ensure that it's locked into the, the groove securely. Without this process, you might have lost a shim off of the shaft of the compressor. Make sure that you've got, I always start with two shims. We're going to achieve a 16 to 32 thousandths air gap. 0.04 to 0.08 metric. I always, this is a brand new compressor. I'm starting with one, which is from the factory. Align the keyway up with the shaft and the hub. Use your 14 millimeter socket. Slide over the hub and nose of the armature. Tap it down. It does not take a lot of force to do that. At that point, when you're reusing the old lock nut, always take a little lock tight and apply to the shaft. And you're ready to. Clutch is mounted. From this point, if you have a non recessed clutch pulley that you can use a filler gauge. You'll need to check the air gap and make sure it's in, under spec. 16 to 32 thousandths, 0.04 to 0.08. Over here we've got an example of a sealed heavy duty clutch which is commonly found on most off-road and farm and ag equipment. On this type of clutch setup, it's a little bit more difficult to check your air gap. We have to use a dial gauge because you cannot put a shim underneath there. Um, it's an emergency use and you just have to get the equipment back up and running. Do your best, the rule of thumb is half the width of a dime. Once again, um, we've done a clutch conversion on an SD7H15 compressor. We took a model 4664 and converted it in from, from 12 to 24 volt, turned it into an 8017 series compressor. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 972-772-5502 or you can reach us on the web at www.acparts.com.